Okay, so in my last update video, I had um, talked about how I was using waist knots um, with my Hade, A Christmas Carol. And I'm doing that Hade on 25 count fabric and because of that I, I liked the coverage with only one strand of floss. So I started using waist knots or a way knot some people call them um, as a way to anchor my thread. Uh, anchor my floss without having to flip my work over all the time and weave the floss through the back of the stitches at the beginning of the thread and then weave my floss through the back of the stitches again when I wanted to end off my thread. I attempted very crudely to kind of very quickly explain how I was using the waist knots and I did have several people ask questions so I'm going to do this little tutorial on waist knots. This is probably not the proper way to use waist knots, but it's the way I use them. Um, I had never used them before. I started using them after seeing uh, the Veiled Stitchers video where she's talking about her gridding and she had briefly explained how she works in a three column pattern with her waist knots. And I just took it from there and now I use it the way it feels comfortable for me to use it. So I'm going to attempt to explain that in this video. If you're not interested, that's fine. You can move on. And if you are interested, you can stick with me and see if, I don't know, you learn something or maybe it might help you with coming up with a way to use waist knots on your own. So my Hade, I'll insert a picture of my um, Hade that I'm working on, my Heaven and Earth design. That's in 25 count um, where I'm only using one strand of floss. And you'll be able to see from the picture what I mean by the waist knots, how they're tied to the side. So I'm going to demonstrate this process on 11 count Ada. Um, I don't grid, which you will have noticed from my last picture, I guess, of my aid. And if you've watched any of my other videos, you will notice I never grid. But for the purposes of this tutorial, I've gridded uh, this 11 count Ada into 10 by 10 squares, just to make it easier for you to see what I'm doing. I've also labeled my columns, column one, column two, and column three. When I use waist knots, I use um, Aisha's um, suggestions of working in columns, so column one, column two, and column three, and I'll explain why I use this and how it works. And um, yeah, that's about it. So let's get started. So column one is going to be the column that I'm actually stitching in. Column two is going to be the column where my thread is actually going to be behind the fabric. And column three is where I'm going to put my waist knot. Okay. So for demonstration purposes, I've done up a little chart here. This is going to be, I should probably mark that on there, column one. And this is going to be column two. And this one that's a little out of view is column three, this one over here. And to make it a little simpler, I color coded the chart because I'm going to stitch this with red and blue floss. So instead of drawing little symbols on every single square, I just colored in this is where the red is going to go, this is where the blue is going to go, so on and so forth. Okay. So this top square is red, so I know I need to put a red square in here. So I'm going to start with my red thread. I've already got it on my needle. Now for the purposes of this video, just so it shows up better, instead of using one strand of floss, I'm actually going to use two. But instead of anchoring it using the loop method at the front, I'm actually going to anchor it using a knot. So you just tie a regular knot. Oops, might help if I did that properly. You just tie a regular um, loose knot 
in the end of your thread, like so, okay? And you're gonna go down through a hole in column three. Anywhere at all, it doesn't matter where you go down through. I prefer though to work a little bit away from the edge of the column. I don't like to put my knot right down here because then when you're stitching in column two, this knot is gonna be in the way um, when you move over, which you'll see now in a few minutes. So I'm actually gonna come down through here, just a few stitches over. And there's my knot sitting on top of my fabric. And I'm gonna come up over here in my first space for column one. Okay, and you just pull it till your knot is a little bit snug but not too tight. And we're gonna stitch. And it's really difficult to do this on camera. So bear with me. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to pause the video, finish the stitching, and come back and show you what I've gotten done. Okay, I've gotten several rows done and as you can see my thread is getting short and I could end the thread off by running it underneath the stitches on the back or if I don't want to flip my work over I can end now with a waist knot. So what I'll do is I'll actually come up over here okay, and I'll make a little knot See if I can do this on camera. It's a lot more difficult than it looks. Okay, make a little knot. And that's it. Sorry for the shaking there. I just snip off that little end and I leave that knot there. Okay, so now it's time to start another thread. So I'll do the exact same thing. I've got a thread with a knot tied in the end. I'm going to thread my needle and I'm going to come down. I can go down in the same hole or I can go down into the hole next to it, which is what I'll do. And I'll leave that little waist knot sitting on the top there. And I will come up here where I left off and I will continue stitching. So now you've seen me start two threads using the waist knot and end a thread using the waist knot. Okay, and then I just continue stitching. Until I need to end this thread again. So when I come back now, I'll have the red in this block finished and I'll show you how I park my thread and then start a second thread in a different color. Okay, so I've now gotten to the end of this red section here on the top square. Okay, I'm going to put in my, finish my last stitch here and then I'm going to bring up my thread here which is the first stitch in my uh, next row and park my thread. So I'll just leave that hanging there. So now this thread is parked for me to start in the next column right here. So now I want to do this next bit which is right here which is going to be my blue stitches that come down in this column. So I'm going to start my blue thread. Just bear with me while I get that. So here's my blue thread all ready to go. Waist knot is already tied on the end of it. Uh, you see it right there. I want to start here with my blue thread. So I'm going to come back over here again. And in one of these holes, I'm going to go down through. Let me move this piece of paper out of the way. I'm going to go down through. Leave the waist knot sitting at the top. I'm going to come up in this hole. Okay, pulling just to get it snug. I don't want to pull too tight because I don't want to pull the knot through the hole. 
and then I'm going to make my first cross stitch right here okay and I will continue on now if you notice on this chart that I made up here you will notice that my blue stitches actually have one stitch here and then they continue across uh, cross-country stitchers would go all the way across here and back for example but with waist knots and a hade if you're working in columns um, you would just come down and leave these stitches for the next row so I'm just going to show you what I mean so we're going to go ahead and, and stick to finishing off this 10 by 10 block and I'm going to put in all of these blue stitches that are coming down the side here and I will come back when I have this stitched. Okay, so now I have that block completely done, just like the square here. And my next blue uh, stitch would be right here. So I'm going to park this blue thread right there. And we'll leave that hanging to pick up when we want to continue down our column. So that's basically how your waist knots work to start and end a thread. You would just uh, go down through the hole here, leave your knot. Your floss is actually running in the back of this fabric in behind. And you would come up over here. So as you're stitching these stitches, you're starting to cover in this floss that's been left behind um, underneath. So now when we go to stitch in column two, this is actually going to become column as we finish this column as as we stitch in this column this is now going to become column one this will become column two and our next column over will become column three everything will shift over one space so for example um, instead of continuing down this column I'm actually going to pretend that this column is finished and we're actually going to start stitching this column now and let's see so this will now become this is difficult to do of course uh, when I'm trying to do it in camera so this one is now finished this will now become column one All right. this will now become column two alright and this over here which I don't have gridded but that's fine just so you can get the idea this will now become column three yeah okay so my doodling is like a hot mess but that's okay you get the as long as you get the general idea of what's going on let me move my little chart down here a little bit okay so like that so this will now become column one this will now become column two and this over here will become column three okay so in this um, block the very first stitch is going to be a blue one so we're going to start with the blue thread just as I did before and just let me grab that so we can get started okay so I grabbed my blue thread and I also uh, drew this grid line on here as well just to keep it coherent for you so now because I'm going to stitch in this block I'm not going to tie my knot in this one because I need to tie my knots in column three so this is going to become my new column three I'm going to put my needle down through there leaving my waist knot at the front okay there's my waist knot and I'm going to come up here for my first stitch okay and I will continue to stitch as though I were normal <laughs> and fill in all my blue stitches in this block now because that's going to take me a fair bit of time I'm not going to fill in every stitch I'm just going to stitch a couple of rows here um, following this diagram just so I can show you um, what's going on with the back of the fabric and how we would then start to cut off our waist knots because these are going to start getting in the way 
as this becomes column one, of course I'm not going to stitch over these knots. These have to be removed. So just bear with me for a moment as I stitch this, uh, these few rows here, and then I'll come back. Okay, just for argument's sake, um, let's say now that this thread is too short for me to stitch with, which it isn't, but um, for purposes of this demonstration, we're going to say it is. <laughs> I'm going to come down through this hole. I'm going to show you how to end off a knot with a knot again, because I already showed you how to do it with the red one in this square. We tied it off over here. So I would come down through my hole here. I would go across and come up through a hole in column three over here, because column three is always where we start and end knots. I'm going to come up through a hole there. And I'm just going to tie a little knot. You'll have to excuse my hands being in the way so I can actually get a little knot tied here. There we go. Sorry about the shaking camera. And we're just going to tie that little knot so it becomes tight down at the flush with the fabric, sort of. There we go. Okay. And once we have that done, We'll take our needle off and just snip off the end there so it's not in the way. And we'll leave that little waist knot there. So we, we always do our stitching in column one. We always do our starting and ending in column three. As this is getting filled in here, it's covering up all of the threads that are from these waist knots in column two. It's anchoring them all these stitches are stitching over the strands that are running behind our fabric. Same as if we took our needle and flipped our fabric over and ran our needle underneath these, underneath these stitches to anchor our floss and then started stitching. We're not flipping our work over, we're not wasting time turning it over to start and turning it over to stop. We're just tying a little knot and continuing on with our stitching. I found that a lot faster um, and a lot more efficient when I'm using one strand of floss. So I'm just going to fill in this little bit here with red. Um, I didn't color it in here on this diagram, but we're going to pretend these are red stitches right here. I'm going to fill this little bit in with red, and uh, then I'll show you how we remove the knots. So I've I've stitched... Um, the rest of this block, I've added in the red here and here, although um, I don't know why I forgot to color in this red here, but anyway, we're going to pretend that this white section is actually red, which is filled in right here. Um, so I've gotten to the end of this red. Someone asked me a question about my waist knots. What about if you want to park to the right instead of underneath, instead of going down the column? What if there was no more red for example, in this block, like I know there isn't here because I've got a stitch there, but what if there wasn't any more red in this column, and but there was red over here? You can park to the side. Um, I'll finish this stitch here. So for example, let's say, um, for argument's sake, I move my little needle minder here. Let's say for argument's sake that this was a red block, like it was continuing over here like this. I don't have my red pencil with me so we'll just have to pretend that that's red going over there. Once you were done your last stitch here you could pull up your thread here and park it and leave it there. But the only thing is you, you will now have waist knots and parked threads in the same block. You may find that a bit too busy but the thing is, these waist knots now are getting cut off because we've, we've stitched over this section. So when this was column one and this was column two and this was column three, now that column two is stitched, we can cut off these waist knots because these ends have all been woven underneath these stitches. So I'm actually just going to remove those now. And what we do is we just pick up the knot, okay, I don't know how well you can see this with this camera, but you just pick up the knot and you snip it off as close as you can to the fabric so it disappears, okay, and we're going to do that with each of these knots, removing them 
from what was column two. You just be very careful not to snip your fabric. Of course, the sharper your scissors are and the tawnier your scissors are, the easier this part is. There we go. So now I've removed all of my waist knots in block two, or sorry, which would have been block three when we were going one, two, three. So I've removed all of my knots that were in my old block three. This now becomes block two, as in one, two, and three, because I'm now stitching this column as column one. I'm now leaving this column blank as column two, and I'm now starting and stopping my threads in column three. Okay, and I now still have this thread parked for my column two. So you can park to the side, or you can park going down. You just have to be mindful that for a certain portion of your stitching, you will have waist knots and parked threads in the same column if you're parking to the side. If you're parking down and only working down in columns, that won't be an issue. So as you can see, um, it doesn't take up a huge amount of excess thread. Um, you would have woven your thread to start and stop anyway if you were using one strand because you cannot use the loop method to start your threads. I'm just going to show you what the back of the work looks like. I have found that it isn't any bulkier than, um, than if you were weaving it underneath. So I'll just flip this over and show you the back of the work. I don't know how well you can see this, but um, so this was, was my block one, block two, and block three when I originally started. You can see these little short strands right here. When this was block three, that's where my waist knots were coming up from. They were coming down through here. My thread was going across my work. As you can see with this red one here, I came down through here. I went across my work and I went up through there to start stitching. Then as I filled in this block and this block, that strand has been woven underneath these stitches. Um, and so on. So these strands have all been woven underneath. There's no real extra bulkiness. I don't have to worry about jamming my needle in there and pulling it through when this gets tight. Obviously the more confetti you have, the more strands you're going to have running underneath your work. But that's going to be the same if you weren't using the waist knot method. It's going to be the same because you would still have to start your threads by weaving your thread underneath to get started. Um, if you're only working again, if you're only working with one strand of floss. Okay? And this of course now has become column one for me, so I've started stitching here. This is column two where I've cut off my waist knots, and this is my new column three. So you can see I have a waist knot on the other side of the fabric here, here, and here, which is coming across to be stitched over in this column two block. Okay? Because this has become my column two right here. So I hope that's answered some of your questions. Again, um, if you do have any further questions that I didn't cover, because again, this is just the way that I'm using waist knots. I don't know if it's the proper way, if it's, uh, I, I have no idea. It's just the way that I use waist knots. And it works well for me, and it's working well on my head. Um, and I don't need to flip my work over. I'm starting and stopping from the front and just stitching away. If you have any questions uh, that I haven't answered, feel free to leave them in the comments section. I'll do my best to answer them. Um, but again, I can only answer any questions based on my own experience using waist knots. I hope this tutorial has helped some people who may be having some difficulty uh, weaving threads through on a very small count of fabric, uh, like my Haid is on 25 count fabric, and I found it very difficult. I'll just quickly show you. 
I found it a little difficult because again it's on Lugana which is not as stiff a fabric as Ada. I found it really difficult trying to weave trying to weave my itty bitty needle through these itty bitty stitches to start and stop. So I found once I started using waist knots I found it a lot better and as you can see this would have been my column one, this would be my column two, and this is, would be my column three. I've got my starting and ending knots here. This column now I've cut the knots out of until down here. I haven't cut these ones out yet. I've parked some threads to the side because these colors don't show up down here. And I've parked, though, the majority of my colors at the bottom. I just found the waist knots a, a lot more simple to use on this very tiny count of fabric. So I hope this answered some questions for people. If you have any others, like I said, leave them in the comments section and I'll do my best to answer them um, based on my own experience using these. Have a great day. Thanks for subscribing and um, we'll see you soon. Happy stitching.